So my yeah. guest today is another uh, amazing up and coming real estate agent in our group coaching program. He's, uh, he's 20 years old. He is out there in the Miami real estate market. With me today, I've got my man, Yayer. Yayer, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, man. How's it going? It's going great. It's going great. So listen, I'm excited to share with the audience really about, I want to I talk about sales skills because at a young age of 20 years old, you've really mastered the reverse selling sales conversation to a point where, like we were just talking off air, where you're setting two, three listing appointments per week, yeah, or in a market where agents are like, Brandon, I can't get any listings. I can't get any listing appointments. I'm trying everything. But here you are, 20 years old. You're really fresh to the game. And you've been able to grow your skills to a point where you're setting two to three listing appointments per week. So I want to kind of walk people through it, unpack all of that. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. So just really quick. So you're in Miami. How long have you actually had your real estate license? A year and a half. All right. So a year and a half in the game. And the first year you were focused on the wholesale side of the business, not retail. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. So I, like when I got my license, a day after I got it, I didn't know you know, anything about real estate. I didn't know like that you're supposed to call door knock. I didn't know how to get business. I just got my license. And then I looked up YouTube, like how to find clients literally like that. And I found you, you were like one of the first people. So the, the day after I found you, I started cold calling, like, like you teach to Fizbo's looked them up on Zillow, did that. And I got previews like right away. I don't know. It just came kind of easy with that, but obviously I didn't know what I was doing. I flopped. I didn't know anything about mindset at that time. I, I knew nothing about anything. And then I found a few people that got me into wholesaling, found a mentor, got into that long story. It was a few months, but that's long story short. Did that for about eight months. That guy really taught me reverse selling. He teaches, he taught me the same stuff you teach because he learned from one of the same fundamental guys from, you know, David Sandler. Yep. So he taught me that system. And then when I decided to get, to get back into retail in January, February. So this was two months ago when I got back into retail. Wow. Uh, yeah. And it was because when I was making the wholesale calls, I was calling so many people and a lot of them did want to sell. They didn't want to sell at a low price. They wanted to sell at retail. So I was like, like it clicked in my head. I was like, oh shoot, I'm, I'm already aggressive. I'm making the calls. If I approach as an agent, it'd be a different story. Um, and then when I got out of wholesaling, I got back into retail. I said, oh, Brandon was just like my mentor. He teaches the same strategy. I know it works. I'm going to go with him. So that's how, that's how it, it, it kind of happened. Love it. Love it. And we're going to talk all about that strategy today. And uh, I think the audience is going to get a lot of value because yeah. I don't, I probably need to spend more time talking about specific skills because my first question for you is, do you believe that, that when it comes down to prospecting, setting appointments, getting listings, mindset's important for sure. Actions, definitely important. But when it comes down to it, skills, like having skills is the thing that's going to move the needle the most. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but, but I believe it's, it's all here. Yeah. That's what so, I so I love it. I love it. So, so let's, let me, let me, let me rephrase that. So our success triangle that we teach our students, it's 80% yeah. mindset, right? 80% mindset. I agree with you. Then actions, then skills. And so I agree with you. The biggest part of anything in business is our mindset, 100%. Um, but really, really, I guess my, my question is, you've got to have all three for it to come together for you to actually start getting results. Because you could have a great mindset, take no action, and you get, you get shit. Then you can take action with no skills, and you may get decent results. But it's not until you can really grow a, a skill set like you have where you put all three of those things together. Would you agree? I agree. Like for me, it was action first because yeah. I was, I wanted to succeed so bad ever since I was a kid, like when I was five, six years old. Yeah. My dad, and then, then I learned the mindset and skill together. And then when I joined you, I kind of already had the three, but then obviously you helped me a lot more with my skill side, which was amazing. I got a listing from your strategy right before I joined. That's right, what made me. Right. 
But yeah, I agree. The three together is deadly, man. And then you just keep growing on them. That's, that's right. All- yeah. Yeah. So, so let's talk through that a little bit. So we were looking at your, uh, I guess the first thing I want to unpack, Yair, because a lot of young people uh, and, and people in general in this industry of real estate, there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, you know, don't, don't prospect. That's a waste of time. You got to do uh, Facebook ads and marketing and advertising. And they're really trying to sell people, especially young people that, listen, social media is the end game. Like it's all about social media. What would you say, because you're 60 days back into retail, setting two, three listing appointments per week with real sellers, with uh, real opportunities. Do you think you could have gotten that many opportunities or that many listing appointments if you were just posting on social media without prospecting at all? No, I would have got zero. And, I, and I'll tell you why even a bigger point. Let's say I did get a few listing appointments from posting, which I wouldn't have. Like I was a God marketer. What happens when I actually have to get on the phone with that person? That's and right. You, you don't know what to do. You're going to freeze. You're going to choke. So that's just the reality. Of it. Unless you're just naturally like a God at, at communication, which is rare. Yeah. Then you're, you're not going to know what to do when you get the opportunity. So I think it, it's all communication at the end of the day. Now, dude, that was so beautifully said. I mean, what what do you think? I, I want your real opinion about, I believe it's a massive, massive problem for, for new real estate agents getting into the business or agents that have been in the business for a long time. These marketing companies, yeah, are promising the world, right? Saying, dude, you don't need to prospect. You don't need to talk to people. Just give us your credit card and we'll go do the rest. I want your real opinion about how big of a lie that is until you can really, because you nailed it. Even if that company, even if they got you opportunities, they got you appointments without knowing what to say, without knowing what to do, it's not going to work, period. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so it depends. It, okay, it depends on the person's goals in life. Yeah. Yeah. First, for, the first thing is this. Do they want to get listings or do they want to work with buyers? There you because go. Now, I have a friend. He's 20. He's also in real estate. He just got into it. And he's doing the, like the marketing thing. He went that route. He works Zillow with buyers. and all that stuff? Yeah, like HomeSnap and all these weird yeah, yeah. things. He just gets buyers, renters, people calling him. He went on a listing appointment. He didn't know what he was doing. He called me. Hey, what do I do? What do I do? Like a, didn't know anything. He didn't know what a listing presentation was. Uh, but he works with buyers and he's good at it. So he's getting, but he's not doing a lot. He's doing like one transaction a month, you yeah. know, hustling. So that's the thing. I mean, it depends on your goals. If you want to make a lot of money and, and really be aggressive and have more time, there's no other way to do it. You have to make the calls. You have to do prospect. There's no other way. That's what the biggest people do. And, and that's, that's right. it. No route. There's no easy way. That's the reality, man. Yeah. And, no- my, and, and, I, and I agree a hundred percent. I think that anybody in this industry whether they're a broker, a manager, a trainer, a coach, a marketer. If, if somebody tells a real estate agent that you do not have to prospect to succeed in this business, you don't have to talk to people to succeed in this business, it's straight up lying. And that person should lose their ability to give advice forever. Would you agree with that conceptually? Yeah, I, I agree 100% because they're probably they're probably not doing deals, man. Like that's the reality. Or they have other people calling for them because in sales, you have to pick up the phone. It's impossible unless you're knocking. Phone calls is the best strategy. It's the best. You're going to reach the most amount of people too. Yeah, and and I agree. And the thing is, you got to talk to people. You have to talk to people. The more people you talk to, the better your skills you get, the more opportunities you get. So let's talk about the actual conversation. Let's get into the sales conversation. So, so many now, for agents watching this year, a lot of people believe what we're talking about. They're like, guys, I get it. You know, you don't have to sell me on prospecting, but when I make phone calls, I don't get very good results. So let's talk about first, let's talk about, um, let's walk them through step-by-step of a phone call of, of how to call a complete stranger where you have no relationship with and how you're able to set a listing appointment with this person based on what you've learned. And I want to really go step by step. So don't go too far. Let's start about the, uh, the, the, the start 
of the phone call. So you call somebody and we'll get into some scripts and some objection handlers here in just a second. What is your mindset going to you back to your point with mindset? When that person answers the phone, what are you thinking? So, so here's the thing with mindset. It's all about before the call. It's all about before the call. So first of all, is this like, if you're first starting out, you're going to think of what to say. So you're going to mess up anyways. So you first have to go through making hundreds of calls. But before the call, this is what I think. Every time I'm helping this person today, that's it, man. Because if I'm thinking of making money or getting the listing appointment, closing the deal, I never do good. And it happens. Some days I do think of making money and closing the deal and getting a listing appointment. And guess what? I don't because they could tell. So when I think of, hey, I'm going to call this person. I'm going to help them. I could see, I'll see if I can provide value. And if not, then it's okay. I call like that. So you do what we talk about all the time, which is detach yourself from the outcome 100% and focus yeah. on the activity. Is that right? That, that's my way of doing it. Yeah. I told I myself it. that I can detach. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Now, so, so you've got the right mindset. You're going into the calls with the right, you know, uh, you're thinking about it the right way. A prospect, let's talk about a for sale by owner. Okay. So okay. for sale by owner answers the call. What, what is that? How do you open a call typically? So I say, hey, Brandon, it's Yeah, I'm a realtor. I was just calling about your property that went up for sale at bum, bum, bum. And I wait. And they say, you know, yes. And I'm like, yeah, I see your son. And if I own her, I completely respect that. I was just curious if you'd be open to working with a buyer's agent, if we bought you a fully qualified buyer. So there's a lot of tonality and, and all of that stuff that goes into it, but it takes practice. Yeah. And, and here's another thing. When someone answers the phone, if they're like, Hello, I same thing. Hi, it's Yeah, I'm a realtor. Da, 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 da. I match them completely. If they're like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, it's here. And people just they they just don't hang up on you when you do that. So it's it's the skills and it's the mindset. It, it comes to like like you're saying. So this is perfect. This is exactly where I was hoping you were going to go because you're talking yeah. about mirror and matching. So yeah. so you're listening, which is a which is the most important thing in sales. That's what you and I were just talking about off air. Yeah. Is listening to the person's. What you're really talking about is their personality type. Yeah. You're trying to identify as soon as they pick up the phone, um, you know, is this person a driver? Are they an analytical, expressive? Are they an amiable? What is their tonality? What is their rate of speech? And then you're trying to mirror and match that exactly because people like talking to people like themselves. And so when you can do that out of the gate, this is what, uh, lowers their automatic reflex of resistance right away. And you get less and less people to get upset or hang up on you. Is that right? That's exactly right. Yeah. It's yeah. Less people hang up on you. Now, not everybody is not going to hang up. There's people that do. It's a lot more rare when you do this, but that's, that's the reality. And when you detach from the outcome, you don't even care about the people that hang up on you. You're just like, you laugh or you just keep calling the next person. So it doesn't really matter. I love but it. yeah, it helps you a lot in terms of at least, you know, because when you're able to get your foot in the door through the mirroring and matching and through all the stuff we're talking about, then you could at least ask that next question and know if it's a prospect or a dead lead. That's but right. But if you're up from the jump, you're not even going to know, is this a deal? Is it not? A, you know, so it's, it's the experience. It's the skills. It's the overtime thing. All right, perfect. So let's keep moving forward. So we open up the yeah. call because we're talking about, we're kind of working it backwards. We'll talk about skills. Then we'll talk about how many contacts you're making per day. Uh, we're talking a lot about mindset as well. So, so you asked the question of, um, I just, oh, there's your video back. My bad. Someone called. Okay. Oh, uh, that's right. So, and I'll edit that piece out. So you, um, <laughs> I, um, so when you open up the phone call, and you say, you know, yeah. hey, this is this is Yair. Uh, I was curious if you'd be open to working with a buyer's agent if we brought you a qualified buyer. A lot of agents right now, they've got a lot of questions. Like, why do you guys ask that question when you don't have a buyer? It's because we're trying to identify, to your point, the lead quality. Because if a for sale by owner is open to that idea, yeah. we're halfway there. What would you say on, on that question? And how many people typically say, yes, we're open to that. On that aspect, I would say probably lately for me, it's, it's been 50, 50, like it used to be more, but now yeah. it's like a lot of people say, no, not right now. I have an objection handler for that when they say no. Absolutely. We're going to talk when, about it. Yeah. When they say yes, I just keep moving. Uh, but here's another thing. When I first started calling using your script, before I got into wholesaling, 
Yeah. I had the same question that these people are having. I was calling it out. I felt so uncomfortable. Like, man, I don't have a buyer. Why am I asking this question? You see, so that's it. That's where the experience and the knowledge of sales comes in. Because when you understand sales, you're like, okay, I'm asking this to qualify them. So I know if they're a good, if, a, if they're a person I can help. That's right. When you don't understand sales. You're like, oh, but I don't have a buyer and I'm lying to them and I'm, I'm a bad person and mindset starts messing you up. So I feel like that is a lot in the head, that question. Yeah. 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 And the thing is, you know, the way I like asking the question is, you know, Mr. For Sale by Owner, are you open to the idea of a realtor bringing you a buyer? Because all I'm trying to do to your point is see, okay, if, if, if they're not right there to your point, I'm going to take the call a different direction. But if they are, yeah. I know they understand the value of a buyer's agent that a buyer's agent brings to the transaction. And they're right. most, they're already willing to pay two and a half, three percent already. After the first question already, I've got a for sale by owner that that is halfway there for me getting the listing. All right. So now yeah, we, we find the answer to that question. After they say, yeah, you know what? We'd be open to that. Yeah. Or where's the next piece? Where do you take the phone call from there? Okay, so this is the good part. I, I don't really go too much by 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 the exact script, so I use yep. something else. So it, it depends. So let's say they say yes. Yeah, I would be open to it. I'm like, okay, great. And from the pictures I see on Zillow, this property looks really, really good. Was there any recent updates on it? So I ask them that. And they always say, yeah, they love talking about them, their property. That's yeah, right. this is bad, bam, 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 bam. I did all of this crazy stuff. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm listening, but, and then I'm like, okay, wow, that's awesome. I mean, you know, how come you'd even consider selling this property? And then I go into the why. And then they say, so yeah, let's pause. Well, I want to pause, right? That, that, that's like so critical right yeah. there. I mean, so you just did two things that are so critical that to having success setting listing appointments. We're not talking about preview appointments here, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about right. listing appointments. So right. let's, so what you're doing is you're looking for their motivation through right. these two questions that are very creative. Keep going. Tell right. us about that. Let me add something about that as well, just so people know. It's not that easy to do. That's when right. I first, when I first started doing it, I was like, hey, you know, why are you looking to sell? Oh, don't ask me that question. It's personal. Click yep. and you're out of report. But when you say, hey, you know, this this property looks really, really good. I mean, was there any updates? And you're you really like, wow, I mean, it looks amazing. I love the neighborhood. It's in. Why would you, why would you even consider selling? They're like, it, they take it as a compliment in that case. So then they answer. Now, now is where it really depends on what they say. Because they either say, hey, I'm looking to sell this thing within 30, 45 days. And then that that's like really good. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. And some people are like, look, I don't care. I mean, this thing, you know, can sit on the market for five months. Uh, and then I, I'm like, okay, awesome. So, I mean, yeah, worst case scenario, if it doesn't sell, you can just rent it or, or you just stay in the property, right? And I'm literally trying to see like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to disqualify them right. more than how to qualify them. But then if they say a good answer, they're like, yeah, you know, I want to sell it within May because I'm moving and, and it's actually, they actually want to sell. Then I ask them when, by when, so time frame. So it's why and time frame is the most essential things. It's why critical. And time frame. Now, critical. now yeah. in the, in, in what you said a minute ago, I hope the people really understood and this is when I teach scripts, I spend so much time on like, if you just come out and ask them, why are you selling? It's, it's an accusatory question. And so a lot of people get defensive and say, that's none of your business. They hang up on you. The yeah. conversation's over. So when you do what you just said and you compliment yeah. their property, now you put yourself in alignment because they live there. It is their house. They do love that house. And now they're like, yeah, you're right. And it, it, it allows the prospect at this very moment for the first time, this is our, this is our first pattern interrupt, right? Yeah. In the, in the call, the first time that we interrupt the pattern of conversation where the prospect doesn't take the question of why you're asking me, it's about why would you leave a property like yours? You got it. Exactly. And that's the question. The prospect answers why it works so well. Would yeah, you agree? I agree 100%. And here's another side to it. Let's say it's an investment. Yeah. Because this, you know this. Then you just flip the compliment. Wow. I mean, this property seems like it's making some really good cash flow. That's Why right. They're selling. And then they're like, oh, he's saying, 
but it's true. Like I try to say it from a genuine place. Like I'm not like lying to you. I'm telling them no. that, like it makes good cash flow. Why in the world? And then they're like, I'm tired of it. Da, 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 da. So you want them to, you want them to be in that place of like, I hate, yeah, I don't want this property. I'm moving. I need to sell it by this time. It's, yeah. it's what we call self-admission. So when we, when we ask a question like that, we get the prospect to throw up all their true motivation on us, which is exactly what we want. And this is how yeah. you do it. So now yeah. once you've gotten past their why, you've gotten through uh, their time frame, you understand their motivation. When, when a prospect has high motivation, what's the next step in the phone call? Yeah, so, so the next step, from what I did, let's say the, the past few days when I got the now listing appointments, I said, oh yeah, the, then I asked them the, the pre-qualifying question. I'm like, hey, That's look, right. I mean, yeah, you know, with the way the market, so then, yeah. So after I say, hey, look, and what's the time frame that you like to have it sold by? They're like one month. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. And look, with the market being so hot, I'm sure you will get it sold by that time or even sooner. I mean, properties are selling within a week or two. They're flying. I'm just curious if for whatever reason, a few months went by and you didn't get the right price, would you at that point consider interviewing an agent to get it sold? All right, now let's stop. There's so much yeah. there, Yair. Because you're so good at delivering this, uh, we got to unpack that for the audience because you just went through that so quickly. The first line in the script that you've mastered at delivering is, hey, with the market being so hot, I'm sure you'll have no problem selling it. Why do we ask or why do we say that? that that's the ultimate pattern interrupt and that's we're, right we're, we're okay this is the way i like to say it. we're softening them before we nail them. and that's the reality because if you don't say that they're always going to tell you no that they're yep. not going but when you compliment them say hey look you can sell it they take it as like they i think in their head they're like wow you know he thinks i can do this some people doubt it they're like no i probably can't sell it like they say that Right. I don't know if I could sell it in a week or two because I really hyped them up. I'm like, look, you can probably sell this thing in a week or two. I mean, things are flying. And then that's, yeah. So you just want to prepare them for that next question. It's but the ultimate. Yeah, it is so true. First off, it's the truth. It is. Second off, it's the opposite of what every other agent is saying. Right. Okay. Every other agent is trying to convince them otherwise. We, to your point, are... um we are supporting their current decision for selling on their own, which allows them to then open up to us because we haven't, we haven't um, given them a reason to push back. We haven't given them a reason to defend their position. This is what this is the difference between old school selling and, and new school selling, or yeah. what I call reverse selling. Yeah. This is the difference between pushing and pulling closer to you. It's like a magnet. So if you, if you uh, challenge a prospect on their current position, they have no choice but to give you an objection, to push yep. you back. So that's the real reason why we say, listen, the reality is this. The market's super hot. For sale by owners are selling like crazy. More times than not with multiple offers. Now they're saying, damn, this is the first time an agent actually understands. They actually get it. So, so this, again, lowers their defense mechanisms, which is what we call a pattern interrupt, which then sets you up to ask a hypothetical question. This is the key thing. And so let's talk about the qualifying hypothetical question again. Let's hear you how you deliver that. It's just that question. Yep. Yeah. So I tell them, you know, but either way, I'm just curious. If for whatever reason, 30, 60 days went by, would you at that point consider, oh, well, hold on, I redo yeah, yeah. it. That's all right, do it again. Yeah, so I tell them, hey, you know, I'm just curious either way. If for whatever reason, a few months went by and you didn't sell the property, would you at that point consider interviewing an agent to get it sold? And Love I say it. like that, interviewing an agent to get it, like, you know, like, would you? And That's I'm not an upswing. It's an upswing. Yeah. So, so there's so many things happening. This is why I want to have this conversation with you to unpack this for the audience because this is a conversation about sales skills. So right. you ask it at the end with an upswing, which is more enticing for people to answer when you ask questions with an upswing, okay? So that's why there's, they, they answer. Now, the reason why there's, they're open to answering this question is because we've positioned the question in a hypothetical situation that we've positioned will never happen. That's why, Yeah, there's no threat to them answering the question, right? So how, many, uh, how much of the time do they answer the question 
And are, are you finding that they're open to that idea? It, it, a lot of it depends. I, I would say probably 30% of the time. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's because really what we're looking at, I know people are blowing you up right now. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, so what we're looking for is like a 20 to 30% first contact conversion, which makes total sense. So now when the for sale buyer says, yeah, we'd be open to that actually, or, or, or when they respond favorably, where's the next step in the phone call? Where do you take that to get the actual now appointment? Yeah. So I'll, I'll actually take that back. It's for me, it's a lot more than 30%. It's like 50, 60, like a lot yeah. of the times it's after all of the why and the time frame and all of that, yes. they'll never tell me no. Uh, they only say no if they have another agent or all that stuff, but that's good because now I'm not wasting my that's time. That's right. That's what we want to find out. Yeah, you have to ask that. Honestly, I think everybody should be asking that question. Yep. Even if they flop, like learn how to do it because you're going to waste less time meeting all these people that already have agents and they're never going to work with you. But That's right. So then the next thing, uh, when they say like, when they say like, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely be open to it. The whole call has been good. Not much resistance. I say, okay, great. Why don't we do this? Let's not agree to do anything at this point in time. What I'd like to do is stop by, take a quick look at the home while I'm there. I'll show you in detail how my for sale by owner program works in the event. You want something to fall back on down the road. Sound fair. And they're like, yeah, that's fair. Sometime. Love it, dude. So there's the whole strategy. You guys like, Go rewind that, walk that through step by step. And, and now that you've been able to deliver this, because it sounds easy, right? Like you and I going through this, doing some role plays, it yeah. sounds easy. And it's all about the delivery. It's not about the words, you know? Everybody can read a script. It's all about the delivery. Go ahead. What are we going to say about that? Yeah. Here's, here's the major thing, because you, you taught me that line, I think like a, a month ago, yeah. maybe. And I've been using it. It's where the situational aspect comes in. Today, I set the appointment because I was talking to you. You're like, oh, do Zoom sometimes. The guy had a tenant living in there. So I knew I'm not going to be able to get in there. Yeah. So I said, look, I know you have a tenant in there. We don't want to bother him. Why don't we do this? Let's not agree to anything now. What I'd like to do is get on a quick Zoom call with you. I'll walk you through my strategy to get home sold. And then at the end of our meetings, you'll, at the end of our meeting, you'll decide if it makes any sense to work together or not. Does that seem fair? Does, I said, does that seem reasonable? And he was like, he couldn't say no. He's like, yeah, that's, right. that's cool. And then I set it for Friday. And then I said, here, I'll send you the Google calendar, the comps, the, the resume, all that stuff. And that was a good appointment because also with that one, he said, you know, if I can get an agent that can sell it for more, I'd work with them. And I was looking up comps as I was talking to him. Love oh, it. He had it for 370. I said, I could sell it for 400. Yeah. Like I was, it was like, oh, you can. And then I went for the appointment. So it's situational, but in a perfect world, that's the script. Like what we did is, is perfect world. If they're not that good of a lead, I don't go for the appointment. I don't say, right. I'll stop by. I'll just say, hey, look, I'll send you a quick email with my contact info and my first open or backup plan. And if it's something you want to talk about down the road, we could do that. Fair enough? And then they're like, yeah. Email's easy. You love it. So that's your, yeah. um, so if you don't get the appointment, like you do what we just went through and they say no, the second thing you do is you try to generate a lead to put into your seller lead database to follow up. Is that right? Yes, but for me, most of the time I go for the email. Right. Because I'm like, it's very rare lately for someone to tell me no for the appointment because I'm only going to go for that appointment. Right. If they have a good why, if they have a good time frame, if they barely gave me resistance. But if they're like, if I ask them, if for whatever reason a few months goes by and you don't get the right price, would you consider working with an agent at that point? A lot of the times you're like, yeah, I'm not open to it now, but I would be down the road then I know like they are going to try it on their own. So when it gets to the time to ask for the appointment or email, I just go for email. Got it. And so that, it, yeah. Yeah. Every, every call is different. Right. And so then you get it, then you get their email and then you put them into our, our follow-up system and then yeah. you follow up with them. They become a nurturer. And then you look to get the appointment long-term. Um, yeah. What, so, so that was great. That was beautiful. Now let's talk about metrics and conversion ratios and, and, and stuff like that, that people really like. So what, Per, and you're not going to have the exacts, but with the listing appointments you're setting, what would you say, what percentage of the time are you getting that on first contact versus through a follow-up contact? Would you say it's 50-50 or, or would you say it's, it, it's heavier on one side or the other? Oh, I mean, you know, I mean, it, you know, but yeah, it's definitely much, much heavier on the follow-up. Like, yeah. 
Like and, 90, 10. Okay. So this is what I wanted you to say it because most new agents that are new to prospecting air, they don't understand. They have no patience. They don't understand the value of follow-up. They are addicted to instant gratification, right? So, so they say, okay, Brandon Yeager, you guys sold me. Let me make some phone calls. Then they make like 10 calls. They don't get a listing appointment through the 10 calls. And they say, dude, this does not work. But what they're not, wrong mindset, agree. Yeah. But to your point, and in my experience, and now in your experience, I would agree. 80 plus percent of your listing appointments comes through follow-up. It doesn't come from the initial contact. What comes from the initial contact are leads. That's why we call it lead generation because we're making first contacts and we're seeing, is there an opportunity here? You yep. want to talk a little bit about that and, and the mindset yep. you have around that? I, I'd love to. So, and that's what we were saying about looking for motivation because then yeah. you know where they're going to fall through, but that comes with experience. Um, so yeah, I can talk about mindset. Like for example, when I first started, I was the same way as all these people, man. I'd make 10, 15 calls. This shit doesn't work. Too much competition. I found excuses, but that's where you got to start reading books. And yeah. that's the reason. You have all the books, never split the difference, all that. I've read those. Because that's when you start learning personal. You can't, like, nobody's going to watch our, our call right now and be like, be like a master. Right. You know what I did? I'll tell everybody what I did. The way I shifted from, like, the way I was, the old me to the new me, the way you say it. That's right. It was about a year ago. Never read a book in my life. Never had discipline. Literally, I went like 360, man. Cut out friends, girls, everything out of my life, right? It was, I had no yep. routine. Started waking up at four in the morning. Started doing cold showers, like all in an instant. Started calling all day uh, and just super fun and reading books all day. Not, no music, no music for like five, six months. Literally like that. And that's how I grew so quick. Cause it was like all in learning mindset, learning skills, learning everything, calling my mentor, like all day asking questions. So that's how you start learning all of this, but it's all here, especially with follow-up. Cause yeah. you gotta, sometimes in your head, it's like, ah, oh, man, dude, I don't want to call this guy. But yeah. You gotta know when that happens. You gotta say, no, I know what's going on. I will call this guy and I'm going to make my calls today. And then eventually the, the voice stops coming and it starts coming with other things in life. It stops bothering you on, on real estate. But it's, it's about learning how to deal with that voice. That's the reality. Yeah, and that's amazing, dude. And, and the thing that I get so excited about working with a guy like you is where how strong your mindset is, the value you're finding through discipline, through hard work, by putting in the work, because you're only 20. Like, I can't even imagine the amount of money you're going to make and the wealth you're going to create for yourself in the next 5, 10, 15 years. What advice would you give you know, maybe to your, your younger self, maybe first starting out, or there's an 18 year old, 19 year old, or brand new agent Yeager who has big ambition, but is filled with fear inside of their mind, who is new to prospecting. What advice would you give them? So, so here, here's my thought on that. And I'm, I like that you asked me that because when I was thinking of the interview, yeah. I was really hoping we'd get to this because this is how I can help people. How badly does someone want it? That's the reality, man. Because look, and I really like giving this example. If I see a girl at, you know, at the gym and I want to go approach her, I might, I might, I'm most, I, I'm not going to do it. A lot of the time I just won't. I just don't do it. Yeah. When it comes to making the call, I did it. I was shaking. I was nervous. I messed up. Hey, uh, do you need a realtor? Click. Every yep. time. Click, click. I was nervous, but I, ever since I was a kid, this was my dream is to be in business. I don't know if it's real estate or this, but I know I'm going to be very successful in business. Yep. So I was not going to let a phone call stop me. I wasn't going to let anything stop me. If this is what I have to do, I'm going to do it. There's nothing that, that can stop me, but in other aspects of my life. Yeah. I mean, I, I might, Interesting. I might let that nervousness get me Yeah. because I don't want girls that bad right now. I don't want these things that bad right now. But business is what I want. That's I'm not, nothing's going to get in my way. It's impossible. So if they don't feel that way about business, then maybe they should look at something else. Dude. That is the hard truth. There's nothing I can say, man. I didn't know anything about mindset and I still picked up the phone. It's because of the desire to succeed in business. I couldn't see my life any other way. That's the reality. It's beautiful. 
That was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that is such great advice, man. I mean, you gave me goosebumps, dude. And like, it's so, and you can't teach that. You cannot teach yeah. desire. And for a lot of people, you got to look yourself in the mirror and be honest and say, how bad do I want this? Was real estate just like, well, let me try this. You know, it seems sexy. Let me give this a shot or come hell or high water. I'm going to win no matter what. And that is what you're saying. The mindset has to be for someone yeah. to really make this work. And if it's not, it's never going to work. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like for me, it wasn't real estate come hell or high water. For me, it was death or success when it comes to business. In real like, estate, it's just a byproduct. Yeah, no. Yeah. Real estate is just a byproduct, but that's right. That's the business. But for me, it was like, if I don't become that definition of success that I'm, I, I see myself in business, it's literally, I'd rather just be dead. Wow. And that's what made me overcome the fear. That's what makes me go on the listing appointments when I'm nervous. I'm nervous when I go on listing appointments. Yeah. That's what makes me be able to say, you know what? I'm going, nothing. I'm going on this appointment. Um, and yeah, man, that, that's just the reality of it. And People can't do this. People can't do business because of the money or because it, it, I'm not doing it for money. I have money. I come from a background of money. Yeah. So I'm doing it just because that's, I don't know. I just don't see, and I'm, I'm working on myself because it's not good to be like death or success. Cause then you start attaching to outcomes yeah. so bad when it comes to that. But what makes you pick up the phone? What makes you do all that stuff is what you want out of life. And some people don't want this out of life. They're doing it because of the outcome they'll get, but, Mm. know what you want when it comes time to putting in the work because i'll tell you i wanted to succeed i've been doing this for two years i just got my first listing just got my first little taste of success for two years i was calling getting hung up on failing i didn't know it was going to be that hard i did not know i thought it was going to be easier than that i really did i thought within a few months i'd, I'd be a millionaire that's what i thought yeah really know how badly you want it when it starts getting hard not when it comes like when people say, oh, I'm scared to pick up the phone, I already know immediately they don't want it bad enough. Yep. Because they would have picked up the phone if they did. They didn't even try. They didn't even start. And they're they're coming up with excuses. Yeah, letting the nervousness get to them. If, if they're not seeing my, if someone's, if that person that we're talking about is seeing this message that I'm saying, and he's not getting emotional, like tears. Right. So when I, when I was, when I was being a coward and when I was, was not being successful, not with calls, but like with other things. When, when it came to business, when I wasn't achieving the results, and I saw someone else that was like kind of getting somewhere saying this stuff, I cried, literally cried, man. Cause that's how, that's how much I want. That's how emotional I was about it. And that's when I knew too, I was like, I really want this. I'm getting emotional. I want, nothing's going to stop me, you know? So, so yeah. true, dude. And I'm the same way. Like I get emotional about it too, because my burning desire is so deep rooted that I'm yeah. going to win period. I mean, there's not anything yeah. that's going to stop me, nothing. Yeah. And this is the mindset you have to have, but it's rare to be fair. I mean, to have this type of mindset, 90 plus people, percent of the people don't have the mindset. So in a year from now, you keep working on yourself. You keep working on your mind, your skills, your action. If we do this again in a year from now, what type of man are we going to see? What type of results would we have uh, experienced? Tell us where you see yourself in a year from now. That's that's a good question. I see myself being on a higher level when it comes to mindset. Okay. And then that, that's what's going to cause all the other outer materialistic stuff. But it's in here. It's Love in it. here. That's what's going to cause everything that you see in my life. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to get better at everything I'm doing. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in a year because obviously, you know, I'm 20. So I don't know yeah. where my life to be. Hopefully, though, a little less extreme, because like I told you, it's like business all day. Right, you know, right. You know, or, so that's what my, my I have a mindset coach, literally. Yeah. You know, we do four sessions a month and he's helping me. He's high performance life coach. That's what he does. Yeah. And I, he, he's working with me right now on balance. So I'm not balanced. So hopefully right. that yeah, I, I think that within a year, I'll definitely have it's going to start falling into place this year, I think, with the money and with the with all that stuff. Things are going to start coming like the listing yeah. I got. The one I first got, just got a full price cash offer on it. Love it, Let's dude. Go on that, man. So yeah, it'll come. It'll come. Yeah. Next year. I love it, man. I, I just, you know, I, I love the time that you and I spend together. I know people inside of our coaching program, they can't stop talking about you because of your positive energy and your effort and your skills. And I just keep going back to everything we just talked about. It's like, guys, 
He works his ass off. He puts in the work. He works on his mindset. He's constantly educating himself. I mean, this is why these are all the things that lead up to who you are right now. That's going to continue to just grow and catch fire. So dude, thank you so much for doing this. You're going to inspire a lot of people. And again, I want to thank you for pouring back into the industry because, you know, I think it's rare to have these open conversations like this and to give that to the world. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. That's my ultimate goal, man. To, to change the world. That's what I want to do. Me too. <laughs> you know, yeah, I see. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, we're similar on that. But yeah, I just love helping people. I hope that there's someone there that's watching that really does want it bad enough. And, yeah. and he, he does what it takes, man, because he will. At the end of the day, the person that wants it is going to get there. They will do what it takes. They just, these type of things help them along their journey. And it's good. Yeah, I love it, dude. Well, listen, I'm, I'm grateful to be working with you. I'm glad our paths crossed. You know, I, I'm, um, I love that I have the ability to coach somebody like you. So any last words of, of inspiration before we let you go? No, 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 not much. You I dropped think it I, all. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I dropped it all, but same to you. I appreciate you. And, and, uh, yeah, you're a great guy, man. Just being like seeing you on YouTube, it's kind of like, oh, wow, this guy's like a God. And you kind of see the person as like a godly figure, but when you actually talk to you, it's, it's a different story. I think you're, you're a great person. And when you jump into the course, you really help. You do the one-on-one -on -one conversations, which really helps. And yeah, man, I just appreciate you. You've helped me a lot in the past two months for sure. Yeah. I love it, dude. Well, we're just getting started. We're just getting started and yeah. we're going to do this again in a year and um, it'll be a lot of fun. I wish you nothing but the best. You're going to continue to work hard, continue to get great results. So dude, thank you so much for doing this. And I'm sure we'll see you on a coaching call here very soon. Of course, man. Yeah. I'll see you. All right, brother. Take care. All right, man. All right, bye -bye. You too. Thanks.